Hi everyone, Nigel Saunders here. I've prepped all my show trees. They're ready for the show coming this weekend. So now I can start moving my tropical trees out from the basement and the plant room outside here in the greenhouse and the poly house. And I'm starting off with my bougainvillea. Here's a look at my pink pixie bougainvillea. You can see this shoot really took off over the winter. So today I'm going to prune it up. I'm going to start the work today by pruning up this really long shoot here. So I'm looking for leaves that face outwards to prune just above those so my new growth comes in more horizontal and not vertical. So I think I'm going to come in right here. Big cut coming up, here I go. Just like that. I will try and root this cutting. The tree is looking much better already, so I'm going to start shortening some of these ones in the apex here. And again, I'm looking for leaves that go horizontally, so I can prune just above there and keep that horizontal branch structure going. There's one out front. I can prune right back to here. And there's one back here. This one I'm looking for leaves going out the back, like that, to get a nice crown on this. Now there's a long shoot here. There. So the tree is looking much more balanced now. Now I've got a horizontal, a thick horizontal branch coming out here and then I've got a lot of vertical growth on it. So I want to prune that vertical growth back, encouraging my more horizontal growth. So I can prune this one back to here, which doesn't shorten it by a whole lot, but I'll take this leaf off. And then there's one coming up the back here. I'll shorten that one too. Back to here. Like that. That gets a bit of branch separation there. Eventually I'd like to get more. There's a dead leaf there. Get that out. The same for the branch above. It's not real vigorous, this branch, so Maybe I better not touch it. I was going to try and get it a little more horizontal, but it's not vigorous enough, that branch. That may be all the pruning I can do today. I'll rotate it around to the back here and just see if there's any longer shoots I can prune back. think so. I think I've got all the vigorous shoots already. I could do a little leaf pruning here. Just taking out some of these leaves that are facing the inside here. It's a little congested in that area. So that gets that better. I guess this branch is getting a little vigorous. I could prune that one back to, to here. Okay. Well, that's looking very nice, I think. I better give it a water, too. It's, a, it's just starting to dry out. All right, here I go with the water, and in the water is just a small trace amount of fertilizer. And that will do. My pink pixie bougainvillea is one of my older trees. I got this when I was first getting into bonsai and it was just like a, a pencil thick, absolutely straight cutting. And 
I had to do some serious uh, trunk chopping and I've been developing it ever since, so probably close to 30 years. Not only have I seen the tree mature, but also the pot. When I got this pot, it was like a fairly new pot. And now it's starting to get some real patina to it. It's really, the glaze is cracking naturally. I'll try and show you a close-up of that. Here's a close-up of the glaze. And you can see it's getting that natural cracking in it. Getting some really nice natural patina on this pot. I've had this tree in this pot for quite a while now. And I think it's a good match for the tree. Here's a final look at my pink pixie bougainvillea. It's developing a lot of character, this tree. It's uh, yeah, always been one of my favorites because it flowers, the leaves stay small, and it doesn't have thorns on it like a, a typical bougainvillea. So it's always been a favorite in my collection. I brought my old hibiscus out of the plant room and it's outside on a bench because it has insects. Let's go have a look at that now. Here's a look at my hibiscus. It has white fly on it. So I'm going to bring it into the poly house and strip all the leaves off. I've got the hibiscus on the turntable. So the white fly, I sprayed it with soap and water and that kills any living insects that are on the leaves, but they lay eggs. The back side of the leaf is covered in eggs and I'll show you a close up of that. Here is a look at the hibiscus. So if I turn this leaf into the sun, so it's shining down, you can see bumps on here. And those are the eggs. So spraying kills any you know, flying insects or any insects that have hatched, but it doesn't kill these eggs. And these eggs hatch every day. There's a, there's an insect there. I'm gonna, oh, he flew off. They're hard to catch. So all these eggs on here, if you can see that one. In the sun, all these eggs will hatch, make more white fly. And it just sucks the life out of the plant. They're not as, uh, destructive as say aphids or that, but they certainly zap the vigor out of the plant. So I think total defoliation is the, what I should do for this tree. Spray it with soap and water, keep it in the poly house here or outside until I know the insect problem is gone. And I may just have to keep spraying it with soap and water uh, until, you know, everything's hatched, the eggs and the life cycle is over. Uh, so here I go, total defoliation. Now the tree, it doesn't look the best, but it's grown with vigor all winter. So it's fine, it's uh, got lots of strength in it, so it can handle this defoliation. All right, so here I go. And luckily, scale insects, they'll, they'll cover the leaves and the stems and everything, but whitefly generally is just on the leaves. So hopefully I can get rid of it. And it's hard because I have that privet hedge outside here and that tends to get white fly on it. So I'm always battling with it. And I'll dispose of all these leaves. I'll, uh, I'll probably put them in a bucket of water underneath the water and just let them kind of rot away so it'll kill all the eggs, drown them. And I'm sure there's natural enemies to this white fly, um, but they haven't shown up yet. So I imagine in the summer they would be some colonies of insects that feed on white fly. So it would keep the population under control. I finished defoliating the hibiscus. Now. I noticed on this new soft growth, there is eggs on the growth. So I'm going to prune it back also. That'll get rid of a lot of these eggs. So I'm pruning based on leaf scars. So here I go. Pruning back this new growth.
This is also a very old tree. This was my mother's and she gave it to me. Tip off there. Okay, so that's got the tree all pruned up. It's looking nice. I'm going to give it another spray with soap and water just to make sure I've got all the insects off. And I'll show you where I'm putting all these clippings. Here in the half barrel of water, I put all the hibiscus leaves so they're underwater, all those eggs. So even if they do hatch, uh, nothing will come out. They'll just drown. Here I go with the soap and water. Now I made this soap and water mixture a little stronger, so it's probably more like 20 parts water to one part soap now. So I'll spray the whole tree down. Here I go. Make sure I get all surfaces. Spray from above, spray from below. That should do it. I'll let that sit for, I don't know, four or five minutes, then I'll rinse it all off. I'm not going to rinse the top of the tree so much, just the soil. I'm going to leave the soap on the branches and the trunk, and that will hopefully help kill those eggs if there's any remaining I don't know but so give it a good a good watering Okay, I think that'll do. I didn't get much soap on the surface of the soil, so it looks good. I'll put my hibiscus outside on the bench, at least in the daytime. At nighttime, I'll have to bring it into the poly house here because it's still getting too cold at night. Some nights it's going down to three or four degrees above freezing. I'm going to keep the poly house as a, um, an intermediate place. Uh, trees with insects, uh, and problems will go into the poly house here until they're looking healthy or until they can stay outside. Here is a look at the hibiscus out on the bench outside here in the sunshine. It's time now for today's updates. You might remember long ago, I was very excited about poplar trees. I found one in the city here that looked really nice. And I had some poplars on the go and I decided to do the big trunk chop on them. So here's an update to them. So I had three trees. The tallest one is this one, which still looks like a stick, but it has buds coming out all over it. So that's good. The smaller one you can see has leafed out here. It's looking really good. And the little one here, it has a bud over here, so I think it'll survive also. So I'm really looking forward to developing these poplars into a decent bonsai. I think they have a lot of potential. Here is a look at the top of the tree. This is the part I chopped off. So you can see the nice small leaves it gets. It hasn't rooted yet. I just stuck it in here. Just in case it decided to throw out roots, I could plant this, but uh, I think the chances are slim. However, no harm in trying. On my Austrian pine, the candles are opening up. You can see all the new small needles on it. It looks really good. So once they get a little stronger, I'll be able to remove all the older needles and I'll just have the miniature needles on it for this year. My ash tree is coming into leaf. You can see all the new shoots all over it. Uh, I haven't seen anything on this branch here yet. I don't. Ah, there's a bud underneath here that might come out. But yeah, that one's being a little reluctant. But it's looking healthy. My European buckthorn, the big one here, it's doing really well. I'm keeping it well watered and fertilized. It's gaining a lot of strength. Oh, I see aphids on it. Okay, I've got to deal with those aphids. Yeah, I see them. There's an ant up there. Definitely has aphids on a lot of the tips. 
So usually what I do is where it's isolated like this, I just prune the tip off and get rid of them. That gets rid of like 95% of them right away. And then you can spray and get rid of the rest. You know, there's another tip here with aphids. But some of them don't seem to have aphids on them at all. So it's doing well, the European buckthorn. I hope this tree does well. It's uh, kind of a big, magnificent tree. And yeah, I, I'm hoping I can make it into a super bonsai in the future. It'll be my one big supercar type show tree. It looks like I've got to deal with those aphid problems and I think all my trees need water. So that will be all for today. I'm Nigel Saunders. Thanks for joining me in the Bonsai Zone.